So the second inductee tonight, we'll see a video for Robin Morton coming up. Robin Morton, contributor to the sport. Philadelphia native Robin Morton started her involvement with cycling when her husband Glenn began racing with the Pennsylvania Bicycle Club in Chestnut Hill, Philadelphia in 1980. 2014 Bicycling Hall of Fame inductee Jerry Casal was the president of the club at the time and he became Robin's mentor as she assisted with the amateur racing team and club races. Robin moved from amateur cycling to the professional ranks by organizing the GEOS team for the inaugural Tour of America in 1983. In 1984, Robin organized and registered a U.S. men's professional road racing team, making Robin the first female team director in the history of professional cycling. The team, sponsored by Gianni Mota, was the first U.S. team to enter a Grand Tour, the 1984 Giro d'Italia. At the time, European cycling rules prohibited women from the race caravan. Before each race, the organizers would vote on whether Robin could even be allowed to ride in the team car. The team she put together the following year in 1985, Xerox Benotto, was the first U.S. team to compete in the Vuelta a España, the Criterium du Dauphiné Libéré, and others. Robin managed teams for nine years, and her professional cycling teams competed throughout Europe, North, and South America. She then transitioned into event management, working with Jerry Casal and Dave Chowner at Threshold Sports for 17 years as the technical director for cycling events, which included professional national championships, UCI races, and the 1996 Atlanta Olympic and Paralympic Games. In 2005, Robin and Alice Armstrong founded G4 Productions, a women-owned event production company. They have organized races, non-profit fundraising rides, and the U.S. Professional Road Racing Championships, and the U.S. Masters and Paracycling National Championships. With her extensive team and event experience at the highest levels, Robin Morton has become a groundbreaking contributor to the sport of cycling. Robin, come on down. <laughs> and here she is, Robin Morton. Well, I'm so honored to be here and to be inducted this evening with such amazing athletes that have accomplished so much in our sport, and especially my friend Mari. Um, you know, it's been an amazing trip for me, 30 years, an adventure, something that I really never anticipated getting involved in. I'm probably the only inductee who has never raced, doesn't ride, and I'm here because I didn't like sailing. <laughs> My husband, Glenn, uh, wanted a sailboat, even though neither of us knew how to sail. And instead of taking sailing lessons or starting out with a day sailor, we bought a sailboat and headed out to sea. And as you can imagine, that didn't end well. So Glenn bought a racing bike, and he did join the Pennsylvania Bike Club. Um, there were a lot of notable racers that came out of the PBC, including Dave Chawner and Miji Riach, who were in the Hall of Fame. Uh, Bruce Donaghy, and John Eustace. I uh, was the winner of 1982, and I went to an end-of-the-season club party and was introduced to John. And at that time, John was one of the few Americans that had a contract on a European pro team. One of the other ones was George Mount, uh, David Mayer Oaks, Jonathan Boyer. And so um, I started talking to John at the party. I was introduced to him. And he mentioned that he was pretty burned out from living in Europe and didn't have a contract for the following year and was interested in putting together an American team to race in Europe. And was I interested in helping him? So I don't know. I must have had sucker written all over me. But I said yes. And so uh, the first team we had was for Geos for that tour of America, which was a great event. It was a small stage race in northern Virginia and Washington, D.C., and it was organized by Capital Sports. They were actually boxing promoters. 
And uh, they brought a lot of big teams over from Europe, had a good budget. Unfortunately, it was only around for one year. Um, but through Geos, I met Gianni Moda. And Gianni was an ex-pro turned bike manufacturer. For those of you who don't know him, he is a big celebrity in Italy, blonde, blue-eyed, very outgoing. He had won the Giro, third in the Tour de France, uh, won the Tour of Switzerland, just about every single day event in Italy. And he wanted to have an American team on his bikes in Italy. So in 1984, we put the team together. It was basically then comprised of a lot of free agent pros, uh, some Europeans, and in April, we headed over to Italy. And it was, you know, I was completely unprepared for all of the press and attention that I received being the first woman to manage a men's professional team. As, the, as you know, it was said in the video that they had to vote as to whether or not I could even be in the team car, in the caravan. I don't know what, they, what I would have done if they said no because I was already there. Um, so I guess uh, things would have changed and I wouldn't be here now if they had said no. But um, I made a lot of friends that I still have to this day and, and one of those is Riccardo Magrini. Riccardo was an Italian pro. He was captain of the Metro Mobile team. He spoke English, was very funny, and he actually looked like Jerry Lewis. <laughs> and that year in the Giro, um, Ranchilio was a sponsor of the Giro. They manufacture espresso machines. And every day they would come to the stage start and bring their RV and give out free shots of espresso to everybody. So one day Ricardo says to me, hey, you know, we want you to come and be part of the Ranchilio Club. The Ranchilio Club, as it was loosely called, um, they would allow the team captains to hang out inside the RV before the stage each morning to kind of get away from the public and, you know, have a few minutes to themselves. So off we went, and we're sitting there, and they're all chatting away, having a good time. At least that's what I thought because I didn't speak Italian. But um, so we're just hanging out, and Ricardo gets up, and he says to me, well, since you're part of the Ranchilio Club, and now we think of you of one of the guys, but you're missing one thing. So I'm thinking, okay, they're gonna give me some like really great sign, Malia Rosa, or some one of a kind Giro memorabilia. And Ricardo stands up and he hands me a tray. Now keeping in mind the Ranchilio Club, it's all the captains of the teams like Cerrone and Moser and Vincentini and Fignon and all the big riders of the day and me. And so he stands up and he hands me this tray and he says, this is for you. Now you'll be like us. And on the tray was an arrangement of vegetables made to look like male genitalia. <laughs> so it wasn't all that spontaneous because they actually had a photographer there taking a picture of the whole thing. So, you know, I was really mortified. They thought it was completely hysterical. And I, I tried to be a good sport about it, you know, and, and take it in the spirit in which it was intentioned. Because the only way I would have been accepted is if I kind of just went with the flow and didn't expect them to make exceptions because I was a woman. Um, the next year we had a team in the Vuelta, which was crazy hard, rugged race. The Vuelta was in April then. And then I managed teams for the next six or seven years. Usually they had an Italian component um, that enabled us to race part of the season in Europe. And after that, I was really lucky that I was hired by Dave Chawner and Jerry Casale as their technical director. And I worked with a great team of people and we put on some of the best UCI races in the country, including San Francisco, Philadelphia, Thrift Drug Classic. We did the first tour of Georgia. And now with my partner, Alice and G4, we still produce the Philly race, and I'm really proud to say that it's one of the few world tour races, only two in this country for women. Um, we have equal prize money for the women, and it's the featured event of the day. And so, thank you. Um, so I just wanna leave you with this uh, one story. In the Giro, the riders' contracts were written so that they had to finish in order to get paid, right? This is cycling, so that's not a big surprise. So they had to finish in order to get paid, and one of our sponsors didn't want to pay them. 
So he managed to talk one of our mechanics into tightening their bottom brackets. So every day, after they turned their bikes in to get cleaned and whatever, he would tighten their bottom brackets just a little bit more. So that by the end of the Giro, they told me, it was like pedaling in wet cement. Yeah. So, but they all finished, they all finished. And so for me, the lesson is that, you know, cycling is just like life. Sometimes just finishing is winning. So I thank you. Robin Morton, everybody.